What myopia is, basically, is our eyes are too long. And so light doesn't focus properly. So when you're myopic, your eyeball has literally grown too big and the light can't focus on the back of your retina. Myopia is short sightedness. Uh, that the people can read excellently, uh, can see near very good, but for distance, they cannot see at all. And we have this myopia explosion globally. It's this huge epidemic. I think there's been a lot of publicity about the progression of myopia and the increase by epidemic proportions in, in Asia. But it's happening in the United States. It's happening in all Western countries. Some have estimated that by 2050, there'll be five billion myopes in the world. In the history of our species, we, we can't all have been so nearsighted. For most of human history, we were seeing at a distance. And you couldn't have been out on the savanna going, is that like a lion? You know, right? So they just eat you and you wouldn't evolve. So now, though, when the eye is growing, your signal's right here. So you develop a different length of eye. We spend an awful lot of time, no more than a foot in front of our face, inside while we're doing it. So to the extent that those factors matter, we are not producing normally sighted individuals now. What is starting to happen in a lot of other cultures is the need to take a sight break. In places like, say, Singapore, Taiwan, um, something like 85, 90% of the childhood population is now nearsighted. Singapore has a population now with about 90% myopia. They had these, these posters up that said, keep myopia at bay. Go outside and play. Take a sight break. For every so long that you spend doing near work, you should be spending some time actually looking out into the distance and nature, getting a little bit of light exposure that's natural can go a long way toward normalizing vision. Normalization of the eye requires ultraviolet light. It requires the ability to look out into great distances and actually train the lens to accommodate. So behavior does play a role in this as well. We have less uh, outside activities, sports, soccer, baseball, whatever, the kids normally, uh, normally did in the past. So they sit in a darker environment, which also decreasing the dopamine level. All of this uh, causing uh, the myopia progression. And if they already start the myopia progression, that's the elongation, unfortunately, very hard to stop. And that's where we as practitioners need to do everything to be getting able to stop the myopia progression. And not just your eyes developing, though. Think about that. Your brain's developing, too. So if your brain is developing around this kind of signal, that's a real different kind of brain. I would not be surprised if diet has a lot to do with this. Um, we're eating in ways that are, right as we're seeing these changes sort of taking off in society, if we start analyzing our diets and behavior, we're getting a lot less vascular perfusion, right? We're not getting our heart rates up. And not only that, um, we're eating in ways that are really counter to ways we've ever eaten before. It's never been the case historically that chickens have breasts that are so large that they can't stand up. There's this theory that it's insulin and insulin-like growth factors that cause the eyeball to grow bigger than it should. We're using a lot of hormones, a lot of growth factors, a lot of antibiotics. You know, we're, we're eating in ways that simply do not match our physiology. And the amount of sugar that we're taking in would be certainly one of those things that, again, is, is not a wonderful physiological match for the diets that our bodies have evolved to handle. We're consuming things that are just not natural. You know, and to, to expect that, you know, myopia is a very structural thing. But what are the structures made of, right? They're made of nutrition. To believe that nutrition doesn't play a role in this picture would be a mistake. If the elongation is more than 2.6 millimeter, then we already have problems. Basically, macular degeneration could be, it could be retinopathy, and it could be even glaucoma. So those are the the problems we would like to eliminate. 
but people don't need to just wait to see what will happen and, and hope for the best. There can actually be some preventive me measures taken to help reduce um, the amount of myopia people will have. The first is, is really very simple. Um, at a young age, the more time one spends outdoors, the less of a chance there will be that myopia will develop. Now, um, the recommendation is to have children play outdoors for at least two hours a day. Um, the second one is to limit near work. So one thing that, um, that I would strongly recommend is limiting technology time you know, sight breaks for every so long that you spend doing near work. And that includes reading a textbook too. Um, you should be spending some time actually looking out into the distance in nature, getting a little bit of light exposure that's natural, et cetera, et cetera. If they need to watch something, it's better to have them watch TV from across the room than it is to watch something on an iPad. The third in, in very important one is to make sure that if there is a prescription that is needed for eyeglasses is that it's kept up to date. If a prescription isn't precise, um, then that could help contribute to the eye's elongation. Um, so it's important to, to follow your doctor's recommendations on how frequently you should go and, and, and see um, the, the eye doctor to get that prescription updated. There, there's a myth going around that wearing eyeglasses or, or wearing contact lenses can make your eyes go worse, and, and it's, it's just a myth. I don't know where it came from. I, there, there's some ideas of, that if you wear glasses, um, your, your eyesight will become weaker, but that, that's no scientific study you know, with proper methodology has ever found that to be the case. There are contact lenses that are designed especially today and that are being used very successfully to help control the progression of nearsightedness. Um, rigid gas permeable contact lenses with special designs um, that are, are meant to be worn um, by children overnight. The shape of the eye would be adjusted so that when they woke up in the mornings and took off their contact lenses, they could see clearly throughout the day. And it's been found that these also help control the progression um, of myopia. These are called orthokeratology. And that means reducing the risk of having the serious eye diseases that, um, that can come later in life. Children as young as six or seven or eight years old can wear contact lenses. One shouldn't wait. It's important to start soon to control the amount of myopia that will develop by using um, contact lenses that are specially designed for that. For the keratology, uh, basically we are flattening the central portion of the cornea and this, uh, this flattening is increasing the peripheral thickness of the cornea. We are redistributing the corneal shape with our contact lens. We push a little bit the central portion of the cornea and it redistributes the fluid of your cornea to the periphery. Between 8 and 12 years of age is, is the best way to start the myopia progression reduction. It usually takes about a week or a week and a half to get the full, uh, full correction uh, settled. The orthokeratology need very, very uh, careful treatment uh, from us. So one day after we did the orthokeratology treatment, the patient is coming to us. Uh, we, uh, we check the patient's eyes where it's healthy, the redistribution value, everything is okay, everything is normal. Then they are coming to us one day, three days, week, at the first, uh, the patient is coming to us, we're doing the regular exam, and then we are fitting them the lenses here, okay? And uh, the patients, it, we are doing it in afternoon, and the kids are sleeping with the lenses, using rewetting drops, and then coming back to us in the morning, and we, basically I personally, take the lens off from the eye, and then I'm remeasure. Uh, the, uh, the refraction and I, I see whether the lens is optimally uh, centrally fits or not 
or what kind of modification I need to do to get a successful fit. Then we teach the patient how they can put it and take out the lenses. Then they going home and they are coming three days later, one week later, and if everything is going well, then one month later and every three months we are, uh, we are checking uh, the patient. So you're seeing him every three months in perpetuity? Yes. Uh, in our cases and our practice, we see about 70% uh, success for myopia progression reduction. Thank you for watching Open Your Eyes. Be sure to tune in for more informative episodes.